so in this video we're going to talk about this LLMNR and NBTNS so let's see what we have what are these we have the DNS for name resolution so these LLMNR and NBTNS are also used for name resolution when DNS fails to resolve a particular name suppose say nikhil.com that does not exist so DNS fails to resolve then Windows systems use LLMNR and NBTNS uh, services uh, LLMNR stands for link locker multicache name resolution so you will understand at the end of the video why this is called multicache and system looks for LLMNR cache so the system will have the LLMNR cache and the name was not found then it will broadcast to all computers asking for that name in the subnet suppose I want to access nickel.com or I want to access the file share say that is uh, temporary file so let's say some sample file so that sample share is not present on the domain then it will ask for all the computers in the subnet whether each computer have that share or not now client sends the username and the ntlm hash even though irrespective of response so if anyone says that i have this share then the client will send the username and the ntlm hash so then the computer can say whether it has the share or not but the request contains this username and the ntlm hash so you can if the username password has been very weak then you can crack this ntlm hash with john the ripper or hashcat so if you think the hash password will be strong then there is no point in cracking suppose you can try uh, with the tools so now let's come into this nbtns stands for netbios name server this is also same like dns and llmnr but there is some there are some changes between the llmnr and nbtns it is similar to dns and llmnr but it supports only ip version 4 so if you want to uh, access the DNS that is using IPv6 then you need to use this LLMNR because LLMNR support IPv6 and IPv4 as well and you need to remember the order in which the Windows systems uh, use these protocols first DNS will be checked and then LLMNR and then NBTNS so the DNS have the higher priority and then LLMNR and then NBTNS so by this uh, how we can poison this LLMNR and how do we get the username and the NTLM hash so you can see this is the diagram this is the image I have got from the internet uh, see the step 1 this is the victim machine and this is the DNS server step 1 user sends incorrect SMB share address suppose if user types miss uh, misspell the share to snare then it will ask for the DNS however and DNS server responds with this share has not been found then uh, e because of DNS failure it will broadcast to all the uh, computers in the subnet first it will check in LLMNR cache of course it will be not found because it's uh, not correct right so that's why this will perform LLMNR or NBTNS broadcast now we have this attacker machine now what we are going to do is we will say that we will use this responder responder is a python script uh, responder tells the client that I have this this snare 01 and it will accept the NTLM version 2 hash after accepting the hash it will say that I do not have and there is an error in finding this so this we think uh, will not raise anything because it will think that it's a legitimate response like legitimate request and legitimate response so this is the overall view of this uh, error MNR poisoning uh, all we need to do is we need to go on listening with the responder and whenever the victim uh, types the incorrect SMB share address then our responder uh, will capture the NTLM to version 2 hash and responder sends the error back to the client so whatever we do not care about this response all we care about this is NTLM version 2 hash so I think that's all for this uh, video even you can google search for NBTNS uh, node types there are some node types however even though which node type has been set uh, this broadcast will occur and uh, we will get the NTLM version 2 hash